most of you on this call are are currently customers. Some of you guys are, are, are just checking us out. Um, DroneSense has a mission that's really quite broad within public safety robotics. We want to provide a secure platform from which you can extend the capabilities of your drones, of your robotics, of your ground operations, whatever those might be, gathering the type of information you need to, to gather the intelligence, um, to, to understand the situation so you can make a good decision. But before that can start, we really have to understand a little more about the aircraft that you're flying, the pilots who are flying them to make a good decision about whether even to fly or not. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, our view view, of course, is we offer really three primary components of our platform. We have the, the pilots, uh, the interface for pilots, that's the mobile stuff, that's what Eric, Wynn, and the team there uh, spend so much time developing. We also have that operations hub capability where you can see where drones are, see live views um, in real time. And, and then of course we have the administrative side and the admin stuff, um, you know, sometimes is not the most fun part to talk about, but today I think you'll find uh, it's really exciting to talk about what the admin side can do to help bolster, bolster your operations. So today, really the fundamental, the crux of what we're discussing is mission readiness. What is it that makes your aircraft or your pilots ready to fly a mission? So for pilots, mission readiness really comes down to, do they have the right certifications? Do they have currency in whatever aircraft or platform they're gonna be flying? Um, and do they have proficiency, true proficiency in that system? And the question is, how are you gonna track those things? Once you've built a program, you've, you've got your, your pilots, um, maybe they've got their remote pilot certificates, um, maybe you have some internal UAS, uh, operational, legal, and, um, and just basic UAS training requirements. Uh, perhaps you have recency requirements. They have to fly so many flights in so many days. Um, you know, many customers are also using the NIST course to evaluate, um, to evaluate their pilots. Once you've done that, once you've established that program, how are you tracking that? So within DroneSense, we now have a training tab that will allow you to create required training, um, update certifications and um, set training course requirements. You can upload supporting documents and evaluations and reviews on those performances. You can set expiration dates and of course configure email notifications to make sure people are actually aware um, that they're coming up on the end of a, uh, of a required uh, training course or training requirement. The same thing is true for aircraft. What makes an aircraft ready to fly? Um, and this is where th there, of course, are uh, many examples that abound. Uh, but the one that, that popped out to me was actually a government accountability office report uh, in November of 2020 that did a review on DOD aircraft readiness. Now, of course, Department of Defense spends billions of dollars to keep their aircraft ready for whatever missions might come up. Um, and GEO examined 46 different types of aircraft uh, and found that only three met their annual mission capable expectations um, for the majority of the years between 2011 uh, and 2019. And 24 of those types of aircraft didn't meet those expectations a single time throughout those, uh, throughout those years. It is a real challenge to keep your aircraft ready for, the, for whatever mission you're flying. Public safety has a very similar uh, challenge ahead of them and don't have generally billions of dollars to maintain and care for their aircraft. Um, but we've built a maintenance uh, tab as well um, so that you can track when aircraft maintenance is due. Uh, you can create those platform that basically cr configure your platform so that you have um, any type of maintenance requirement that, that exists for your aircraft, whether that's for batteries, for propellers and, and motors, uh, all the way to overall systems check in, in software updates. All of those things can, can be configured individually um, for your aircraft. So um, let's kick it over to Josh. Josh, why don't you take us through um, your, uh, your, basically give us a, a demo of both the maintenance and training, um, and then we'll, uh, at the end, we'll open it up for questions. Awesome. So yeah, Ryan, if you just want to kick it over to me as the presenter. All right. So everybody should be looking at right now the main landing page for the DroneSense web console. First thing we're going to discuss today is going to be training. So over here on the left hand side menu, come down, click into the training menu, and this is going to open up the training portal. 
So you can see here, Ryan and I have already come in and we have added a few different uh, certifications and training classes and things that either he or I have participated in. So first and foremost here, you see this level one UAS thermography certification. You see how many members have completed this training, how long until this certif certification expires, and we see who the, the, uh, the authority was. In this case, it was ITC. The next one here that Ryan put in is a NIST evaluation or for the Proctor NIST course. See two people on this account have completed it. It's a 90 days till expiration and the granting uh, authority was Bracken PD, which I'm not sure how much weight that carries. Uh, and then the last one here, you can see this is my part 107 certification. Uh, you can see it's a duration of two years and the granting authority is the FAA. But if we click into any one of these, we'll go into this UAS thermography course. You can see it pulls up what type of uh, training this was. Again, the granting authority, uh, the duration, how many members have completed this training, and then a description. You can see this was a level one UAS thermographer certification course provided by the Infrared Training Center. The dates this class was taken and the expiration date. And then down here, you can see our current members being myself, how much time I have till I expire, and then you can see all the teams that have access to this, uh, this training should they complete it. And then down here at the bottom, you can see we can set up email notifications to determine who needs to be getting email updates when this training is either you know, about to expire or when it has lapsed. You can put in an entire list of emails there and we can set a time for these notifications to start and a time for these notifications to end. So you know, it, it's fairly simple for ingesting uh, you know, this kind of information. I'm gonna back out and we'll look at one more here. We'll look at Ryan's uh, NIST evaluation here. So we can see this was a proctored NIST course. Again, Bracken PD was the, uh, the granting authority. This is a 90 day certification. Two people on this account have taken it and you can see each pilot must successfully complete a proctored NIST course evaluation each 90 days. Now this can be set up based on your agency's SOPs, SOGs. Maybe you do this once a quarter, maybe you do this once every six months, maybe you do this once a month, once a year. Again, all dependent on how you um, on how you want to set this up. And you can see that Ryan has actually added two documents to this training class as well. Uh, we've got the, uh, the introduction to the test methods, and then we also have the active test lane forms for what the proctor is filling out as you're completing these tests. Down here at the bottom here, we can see again, the current members who took this, uh, this proctored NIST course when they expire, as well as all the teams that have access. And again, we have email notifications down here as well that we can set up. Um, we'll walk through just real quickly kind of what this training looks like and how we add that. So again, from this training tab, I'm gonna add new training. Again, we can give it a template name. We can determine what teams we want to have access, what type of training this is. So maybe, maybe is this a you know just an internal agency test? Is this something through the Dem uh, National Domestic Preparedness Training Consortium? Uh, who is the granting authority? How long does this last? And then a description of the course. And once we create that course, then we're also given the options like we had here to add current members to this course and also see when they expire. But there's more than one way to assign training uh, to your members once it's been created. So, you know, once we've created these, these training courses, these certifications here under the training tab, if we go into the members and teams section, you can see now that anyone that has completed one of these trainings has that indicator under their name. So if I skip a page ahead here, and go to my name, you can see I've got my ITC certification as well as my 107 compliant little sticker here. But if we click inside the individual user, here on the right hand side, you'll see our training. And it's very easy to click this little add training. And this is will populate a list of any of those trainings that we've created in the training tab for us now to add to an individual. So you can either go through the training itself or you can go through the individual. Uh, but it's a you know pretty simple process and really the sky's the limit. Again, if you're doing you know, internal department training or you're going out to maybe take a forensic mapping solutions class on PIX4D or you know, the CRACER class for UAS response technician one and two, 
uh, really the sky's the limit into how you can add in this information and track this information through the platform. So we're really, really excited to finally roll out training. Uh, for those of you that know Jason Day, I would encourage you to uh, take a look at what he's done on the DPS account for all of the different training classes and certifications that they have. I think he's taken it a, a step beyond what you see here. Uh, but the next thing that we're going to discuss, you know, training is great, but just like um, Ryan said, in, in keeping a system of readiness, um, hardware readiness is a big thing. So we have finally finished the first iteration of our maintenance portal. So I'm going to click down here to maintenance. And this is going to open up our maintenance section. And you can see right now I have two different maintenance checklists that I have added. Uh, this first one here, this is a Matrice 200 series airframe maintenance. And then the next one is the Matrice 200 series propulsion system maintenance. Uh, so if I click in here, you can see, you know, this is the 200 series airframe maintenance for drones, 11 steps, give or take about 20 minutes. Who was it created by? When was it created? Basic description, uh, right hand side here, all the teams that have access to this maintenance list. And then up here, you can see I've appended a document, and this is the DJI Matrice Series Maintenance Guide that was issued directly from DJI. Uh, but if I scroll down, uh, I can click in Edit Maintenance, and now we can see exactly what this list looks like. So there's some, uh, some steps here with basic description for each step. So I'm going to save that. And down here at the bottom, we would see a history of any aircraft that have had this maintenance list run. So it's fairly simple. We can click perform maintenance here within the maintenance checklist itself. It's gonna pull up a list of aircraft here. I'll click on this M300 and click save. And it's gonna open up our maintenance checklist. And so we'll start going through one at a time. As we click on each item, you'll see it lists out the steps here on the right hand side. I can click pass or fail. So we'll do pass. And as we go through each one of these items, we'll select either pass or fail, pass or fail. We can make individual notes here, and then we would click save. But in my case, I'm just gonna click cancel. But then once we had finished, we would see history of that maintenance being run here. Now there's more than one way to get at running the maintenance checklist. If I balance out real quick to our hardware section, and I click into any one of these aircraft, we'll just for, for uh, the sake of this being a matrice checklist, we'll click on this matrice here. And down here at the bottom, you can see I also have the ability to perform maintenance within the aircraft itself. So several ways to go about running that maintenance. Now, with these two checklists that I have created, I pulled this information directly from this guide right here. This is the Matrice 200 series V2 maintenance manual that DJI put out. I went through and copied some of the steps into a checklist format that we have here. This is something you can download through DJI's website. You can expand on this if you want to, uh, but I just went through, picked out things that I thought were important and added them to our checklist back here. And again, I also, through the resources section, uploaded that document to uh, our account as well. Now you can create as many maintenance checklists as you like. There are several sources of this information. Again, for the DJI specific to the Matrice aircraft, I pulled it from the Matrice guide. Um, but let's say that you're flying a Parrot Anafi series aircraft. Uh, Parrot has put out a very nice Anafi uh, maintenance guide that you could go through and create a maintenance checklist based on the Anafi. Now let's say that you're not flying a, an Anafi and you're not flying DJI aircraft. Well, Autel has a really nice maintenance and service guide on their website for Evo series aircraft. So again, you could take this information created as a maintenance checklist and be logging all of the, all of the maintenance that you're completing. This can be daily maintenance, weekly maintenance, maybe it's quarterly, maybe it's yearly, maybe it's biannually, whatever the case may be, you have that ability to set up specific to your program. Uh, another great resource I found specific to DJI aircraft um, was in the DJI store. They have a guide specifically on drone maintenance. This does not focus on any specific aircraft, 
but it's kind of a general overview uh, on visual inspection and battery storage and maintenance. Uh, I encourage you, you know, find what works best for you and your SOPs, your SOGs, as far as maintenance is concerned. The last resource that I, I, I remembered that was pretty incredible for me uh, is drone responders. Uh, if you're not a member of drone responders, it's simply droneresponders.org. They're a nonprofit, uh, basically built on information sharing. And the only way we continue to push this technology forward is through sharing information. So if you come into uh, the members page of droneresponders.org, you'll see there's an awesome resource center where we can pull, you know, what are other departments doing? What are other agencies doing when it comes to maintenance, when it comes to pre-flight checklists? Uh, and where does that information live? So this is a great spot for you to be able to pull that information. And again, share this information. If you, if you come up with an awesome maintenance checklist that's working for you and your organization, you know, maybe share that with the, the Drone Sense uh, working group on Fridays. Maybe post that in our Facebook group. Uh, because again, the only way that we continue to push this technology forward is by that information sharing. So I'm going to snap back over here to our maintenance portal. And again, it's fairly simple to create these lists. So we'll go to add new maintenance procedure. What are we going to call this? You know, we can say this is our Mavic 2 series maintenance. Who has access? All my teams I want to have access. And this is going to be a specific to a drone. And we'll say this is going to take us maybe 30 minutes. From here at the top, we can start adding as many items as we need to. Uh, we can make them mandatory or not mandatory. And there's no limit to how many you can have. You can have a checklist that is limited to just, you know, five simple items. You can get in the weeds and maybe it'll take you an hour to do your maintenance. It's just going to depend on what your agency sets up according to their SOPs, to their SOGs. Uh, but again, a fairly simple process, very similar to how we create uh, pre-flight checklists within the platform. Uh, and with that, you know, I think that's a good rounded out discussion of how maintenance, the maintenance portal works, how the training portal works. Obviously, this is just our first iteration. We're going to continue to get better and better and make more and more changes. But we really wanted to get this out because we know that these are two features that a lot of you have been asking for. Uh, if you have any other questions beyond you know, what we've discussed today, you can always reach out to either Ryan, myself, or any other members of our team. And again, I just want to give a huge shout out to our engineers who have been working tirelessly to get this stuff put together. Um, it's, it's just really exciting how fast we're starting to move on some of these features. Uh, so with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen.